Does any of this sound familiar to you? I want to leave the corporate world, but how on earth can I do it? I mean, I've got bills. Or how about this? How do I pick out the right website to buy? How do I not end up buying another job? If they do, then you're going to love these three success stories of people just like you who are earning passive income by buying their own profitable websites. You can't afford to miss these insights. If you're ready to learn how you can buy your own profitable website and earn passive income, then tap the like button and let's get into it. And by the way, thank you for hitting the like button. It means a lot and I really do appreciate it. Hey, you're about to hear the first story, but anything like the hundreds of people we've helped to buy websites, then do you have this worry? Even if I find a website to buy, how will I run the darn thing? If that sounds like you, then stick around for story number three. John, a seasoned corporate executive had a problem. He found himself trapped in a cycle of endless meetings and office politics. Doesn't sound fun, does it? Despite his six-figure salary, he felt a void, a lack of purpose. He wanted to care about what he was working on, and he felt a lack of autonomy. He wanted to decide what needed to be done and then figure out how to get it done without some boss breathing down his neck or having to answer a million emails to get stuff done. The idea of owning a profitable website, it sparked a glimmer of hope in him. He said, ooh, maybe this will give me income and more purpose and more autonomy. However, John's journey was fraught with obstacles. John's lack of technical skills made the online world seem daunting. Didn't John need to be a tech wizard to own a website, right? He faced skepticism from peers who couldn't understand why he would leave a stable job for the uncertainties of online business. Didn't John have to quit his job and then go find an online business to buy? Well, no, John did not have to quit his job to buy an online business. In fact, he did the less risky thing and stuck with his job, kept earning and saving, and a few mornings a week, he'd go shopping for online businesses. He'd look at the businesses, identify the risks, and he learned so much about business in the process. There were moments of doubt when he questioned his decision. Never find a solid business at a reasonable price. Price. But John had grit and patience. He tackled his knowledge gaps head on, dedicating evenings and weekends to doing due diligence on online businesses. Along the way, he learned about SEO, content marketing, and website management. He sought guidance from mentors who had walked the path before him, absorbing their wisdom and experiences. By the way, if you're interested in hearing more about this success story, then go to our podcast. It's on YouTube, on Spotify, all over the place. It's episode 231. The turning point came when John found a mentor who had successfully transitioned from a corporate job to an online business owner. This mentor provided not just technical guidance, but also emotional support, helping John navigate the ups and downs of his journey. John's persistence paid off when he acquired a content-based membership site in a niche he knew nothing about. Yet another challenge. His initial challenge was in understanding the community and the content that resonated with them. However, did John quit there? Nope. He actively engaged with his audience and used their feedback to improve the site. John slowly turned the site into a thriving community with a big email list and a very engaged Facebook group. Today, John's online business not only provides him with a passive income, but also a sense of fulfillment and purpose and autonomy. Autonomy. More money, more control, less emails. His story is a reminder that with resilience and a willingness to learn and a blueprint to follow from a mentor, it's actually possible to break free from the corporate world and find success in the online realm. That was John's story, a table of courage, or a tale, I should say, of courage and transformation from the corporate grind to the freedom of online business. We'll get back to the next story in a second, but I wanted to ask you, which one of these stories sticks out to you? Do you relate to anything in these stories? Why? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Sarah, a nurse, had always been passionate about holistic health. She dreamt of reaching a wider audience, but she felt constrained by the traditional healthcare system. She was frustrated because she felt limited. She could only help one patient at a time. She could only work so many hours before getting tired. She's a human. I mean, she's not a robot, she's a person. So to make it all real frustrating for Sarah, whenever she had a new idea, there was all this paperwork at the hospital she had to fill out just to get approval for her new idea. Idea. By the way, if you want to hear more about this particular success story, check out our podcast. It's episode 214. So anyway, back to our story. So Sarah, on her days off from nursing, found a blueprint for doing due diligence. And that gave her a repeatable process, a checklist to inspect websites to buy. She found her website at a reasonable level of risk and a 
fair price, and she bought it. Buying an online blog was her outlet, a way to share her knowledge and connect with others who shared her values. However, the online space was crowded and Sarah struggled to stand out. She faced the challenge of building trust in an industry riddled with misinformation and lies and all kinds of crazy stuff. So there were moments of frustration when her content didn't reach the audience she hoped for and doubts crept in about whether her voice mattered in the vast online world. But Sarah stayed true to her vision to have an impact for her audience. She just kept thinking about them and less about herself. She focused on creating content that was not only informative, but also deeply personal to her. She shared her own health struggles and triumphs, making her audience feel seen and understood. And this authenticity resonated with her readers, who began to see her not just as an expert, but as a friend and even an ally. Sarah's breakthrough came when she launched a series of online courses that combined her professional knowledge with her personal experiences. How did she make her courses? Well, she did a couple things. She noted what her best performing content was. Paul a great idea to notice what's already working and then do more of that. She asked her audience lots of questions. What problems were they having? She did competitive research. So she looked at her competitors and noted how they had solved the same problems for their audience. These courses offered practical advice and emotional support, filling a gap in the market. Today, Sarah's online business is more than just a source of income. It's a platform for positive change. Her story teaches us that in a world of noise, authenticity, and serving your audience, those are your strongest assets. Every business for sale is different and you have to know its specific risks. If you type in websites for sale, you will find a million of them. Each and every one has risks and those risks are not obvious. And because there are a million sites for sale, you need a way to filter down to the good ones so you don't create a situation where you're endlessly searching for eight years. So that's why you need to download our due diligence framework. It takes you step by step doing your own work to inspect the risks and opportunities that are in content websites and as you use it you'll become sharper in inspecting websites and then be able to save time as you become more skilled so go to the description below and download the due diligence framework Lastly, let's dive into the story of Mike and Alex, two friends who turned a passion for personal finance into a thriving online business. At first, they tried to start a blog. Two years later, they still didn't have any traction, almost no traffic, and they'd used up thousands of hours and thousands of dollars. What a waste. Then they saw a YouTube video about buying blogs. What a concept. They could skip the failure part and buy something that was already working. Just an aside here, if you want to hear more about this particular success story, if you want a real deep dive, then check out podcast episode 259. They bought a simple blog in the finance space. From it, they shared tips and insights on budgeting and investing. But as their audience grew, so did the challenges. They faced the daunting task of consistently producing high quality content while also learning the ropes of SEO and affiliate marketing. The turning point came when they realized they couldn't do it all alone. They began to delegate tasks, hiring writers, and a virtual assistant to help manage their growing workload. This freed them up to focus on strategy and growth. But scaling their business wasn't just about hiring help. Mike and Alex had to learn to let go of control, which can be incredibly difficult for many of us. They had to let go of control. They had to trust their team to maintain the quality and integrity of their content. Now, they didn't just let go of the steering wheel, however. They took things one step at a time. They were creating detailed SOPs, which are standard operating procedures for their freelancers, and reviewed their work and gave them feedback so that they could slowly transfer responsibility to their team. They also had to navigate the complexities of monetization, finding a balance between earning revenue, which is important, and providing value to their readers, which is also important. Like they tested out different levels of advertisements on their site. They tested different affiliates and different numbers of affiliated articles each month. Because uh, as an aside, you don't wanna just jam pack your website with tons of affiliate articles if it's not serving your audience. So keep that in mind. Back to Mike and Alex. Mike and Alex also believe in group learning. So they joined a mastermind. It was a group of website owners where Mike and Alex, they asked questions and made new friendships with guys facing the same challenges as them. Their strategic approach paid off. Their blog evolved into a comprehensive resource for their audience, offering courses and a membership program that provided both passive income and a deeper connection with their audience. Mike and Alex's story is a testament to the power of teamwork and strategic thinking 
and building a successful online business. It shows that with the right mindset and approach, even a small blog can grow into a thriving. These stories of John, Sarah, Mike, and Alex are not just tales of success. They are parables of perseverance, authenticity, and strategic growth. They remind us that the path to passive income success is paved with challenges. You will have challenges. Don't be surprised there. But with resilience, getting clarity from experts, and a willingness to learn and adapt to work, it's a journey that can lead to both financial freedom and personal fulfillment. Let their stories inspire you to embark on your own journey to passive income success. Hey YouTube watcher, what's up? It's William Griffin. And if you have watched this video up until now, congratulations. Woo! Please smash that like button. I'm glad you're liking the video. Also, thank you so much for watching and I hope you're doing really, really well. I also wanna ask you, please consider subscribing because my commitment and exploration on YouTube is about to blow up with more stories for you, polls for you, more amazing content, more engagement between us, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you on the next video.